This is what drinking alcohol does to your neurotransmitters and how this can impact fat loss, how it can impact a lot of things. Now, we're also going to talk about how you can counteract this independent of just ceasing alcohol or reducing alcohol. There are ways that you can help this out and make it so that maybe you have less of an impact. But full disclaimer, reducing alcohol consumption or cutting it out is going to be the quickest and most surefire way to restore this. And we're gonna talk about how this is impacting the brain, also how it's impacting the body, how this directly affects your fat loss, potentially even your muscle building. So let's dive into it. Now, after today's video, I put a link down below for 35% off Sundays, which is a human grade dog food. If you don't have dogs, sure, you can skip through this. But also, if you do have dogs, you may wanna try giving this to your dogs because it is the first human grade dog food. That means it's a dog food that literally is using ingredients that you could eat. You could sit down and eat the dog food with your dog because they're using wholesome human grade real stuff. This is unheard of in the pet food industry and that's why I stand behind Sundays. I have three dogs. I've always been a dog person. I'll always have at least two dogs, probably five. And the reality is that they are a big part of my life. Obviously my family is everything to me and I treat my dogs like I would treat my family. I feed them good food because I care about them. So Sundays was formulated by a veterinarian that saw that there was a big piece missing in the pet food industry and I appreciate the heck out of that. So that link down below is a 35% off discount link to try Sundays. Okay, the biggest neurotransmitter that alcohol influences is probably GABA. The reason you feel the way that you feel when you drink alcohol is largely because of GABA. You feel good, you feel calm, you feel like you can dance and no one's gonna judge you, your hips move better, you, it is a social lubricant, right? You feel good. What if that happened naturally, right? Like what if that wasn't, that, wouldn't that be cool? Okay, but alcohol influences GABA, okay? Now what happens with this is when GABA is bombarding the GABA receptors all the time, eventually you end up with a down regulation of GABA. And I'll explain what that feels like, okay? But first, let me give you some scientific literature evidence so you know I'm not talking out of the side of my mouth. There was a study published in NeuroImage, took a look at 52 heavy drinkers versus 49 light drinkers. So both people that were drinking, they found the people that were heavy drinkers had significantly lower levels of GABA in the brain and overall GABA down regulation, but they also noticed that they had more hyper excitability when they weren't drinking. What does this mean? Okay, you ever notice that the more you drink, the more anxious you are when you don't drink and then drinking just calms you down and you can see how this can spiral really bad for people that drink a lot, right? They become, they need it to calm themselves down. You start getting hooked on it. That is a super real thing. The hyper excitability is a result of the glutamate being elevated and not enough GABA. You're GABA deficient. So you have GABA, which is an inhibitory neurotransmitter, which keeps you kind of calm and turns things off. And then you have glutamate, which turns things on. And it's always a balance of on and off in certain regions. But if you're low in GABA and you have too much glutamate, guess what? Da! Even if you're not feeling it, it's happening inside. And that is impacting your sleep. And one of the biggest ways this impacts your fat loss is by affecting your sleep. There is strong evidence. If you gave someone equal calories as another person, equal exercise, but one slept crappy and one slept good. The one that slept good would guarantee you they would lose more fat and build more muscle. And we've seen this in literature. The people that don't sleep well, they might end up at the same weight. They might lose 50 pounds because they're eating the same amount of calories, but one's gonna lose fat and build muscle and one's gonna lose muscle and store or keep fat. Okay, not exactly where we want to be. So that is how GABA and alcohol influencing GABA could impact this. Simply by reducing your alcohol consumption from two or three, four nights a week down to one night week per week can make such a big difference, right? Huge difference, and we're seeing that with the literature. Now, additionally, when it comes down to GABA and alcohol, one of the things you may want to consider trying is trying kava instead of alcohol. Kava can have a huge impact because it influences GABA by using being what is called a positive allosteric modulator. This positive allosteric modulator is gonna make it so that you're gonna to bind to the receptor site with a different compound other than GABA and that influences GABA to lock on to the receptor site. You get the effect of GABA without actually bombarding with GABA. If you bombard with GABA, you will desensitize, build a tolerance, and eventually end up with lower levels of GABA. If you use something like kava instead, 
you end up actually increasing the affinity for GABA naturally without actually bringing in GABA, if that makes sense. So you have a positive influence that's gonna have less of an impact as alcohol would. The other thing that you can do is try adding more L-arginine. Arginine is an amino acid. Add L-arginine along with potential GABA-rich foods like tomatoes, like shrimp and halibut, like ground beef, like uh, fermented foods. Arginine along with these, oh, and cocoa is a good one too, increases GABA's availability to go cross through the blood-brain barrier. So this could counteract. So the day after you drink, you may wanna try having GABA, maybe supplementation. You may wanna try kava, okay? Or you may wanna eat things like tomatoes, beef, shrimp, halibut, and supplement with like two and a half to five grams of L-arginine. You don't need a ton of it. It's a dirt cheap supplement, and there was evidence that was published that found in rats and dogs, we didn't see it in humans yet, that supplementing with arginine along with GABA or GABA-rich foods increases the rate of GABA that gets in, the amount of GABA that gets into the brain from 33% to 67% because the nitric oxide increases the blood flow and allows the GABA to get into the brain more. Very promising stuff. So when we drink alcohol, the more we drink, the more we desensitize to GABA and the more excitability issues we have. So the worse we sleep, all of this becomes a huge, huge problem. So if you want more fat loss, you want more muscle building, you need to sleep better, even if you don't realize you're not sleeping well. I'll see you tomorrow.